What's up guys, if you're a subscriber to my channel, you know I like video games. But what were best video games of the decade, 2010 to 2019? So what I've done here is I've picked one game for every year in that time period of what I think is the best. Note, the best, not my favourite. There are some overlaps of course, but this is what I think is the best, the pinnacle example of gaming of that year. So also note, I'm also choosing games that I've played. So if I haven't played a game, it's not going to be considered. But there's a lot to get through, so let's get straight to it. 2010, Mass Effect 2. So Mass Effect 2, the sequel of course, to Mass Effect. This is a sequel, in my opinion, that improves upon the original in every way, shape and form. It's got a better story, better characters, better gameplay, the combat's much improved, there's less of the repetitive environments, the RPG mechanics have really been narrowed down and focused and refined much more. It's now much more of an action RPG rather than a pure RPG of the previous one, which I think is actually better in this game. The story I think is great, it's one of the best science fiction stories ever told. The gameplay and the combat is much much better this time around. There are side quests involving characters which help flesh them out, meaning you have to care about these characters because you are, the whole point of this game is you're heading to a suicide mission. So you need everyone to be on their game, focused and attentive. So you have to care about these characters. Every decision you make impacts whether someone's going to live or die at the end of the game. It's really fascinating. Now in retrospect, because this is a 2010 game, there probably are some side missions which aren't holding up. So there's probably a few fetch quests in there as well. This game also had some brilliant DLC. Lara the Shadow Broker, for example, brought back Liara to Sony from the first game, really expanded on her story. But yeah, in a nutshell, Mass Effect 2, a brilliant game, one of my personal favourite games of all time. Also, in this year, I think the best game. 2011, similar to Mass Effect 2, a sequel that improved upon the original in every way, shape and form, in my opinion. Batman Arkham City. So Batman Arkham City had to follow up Arkham Asylum, which was very much a diehard meets Batman in an insane asylum. So this time, how do you change that? How do you do something different? Well, you've got Batman in the city, which is now in the Asylum. So the combat from the first game has been improved, I would say. There's new techniques and takedowns, new gadgets and skills to develop. There's much more side content in this one where there's certain characters on the loose you've got to find and catch and so on. The core storyline I think is much more interesting this time around. You've got Dr. Hugo Strange coming in there. But one of the big things about this game heading into it is that this was apparently going to be Mark Hamill's last performance as the Joker. So we knew that this was going to be a key role for him. I'm not going into spoilers, but they do a really good job of dealing with the character of the Joker, his relationship to Batman, in ways that a lot of other mediums haven't really done. But yeah, like I said, I think this is a game that improves upon the first one in almost every way. Sometimes it's not like a huge improvement. The combat, for example, is better than Arkham Asylum, but it's not like a big step up. This is probably one of the best Batman stories ever depicted. 2012, proving that not all games need to be these big AAA blockbuster video games. Telltale's The Walking Dead. So Telltale's The Walking Dead, a five episode, essentially active TV show where you play as Lee who's having to take care of Clementine, this little girl in the post-apocalypse with all the zombies going around. Every choice and decision you make, every interaction with an individual you make has an impact on the story. There are characters who can live or die based on what you see or do. And this is one of those games where chances are if you play for it from beginning to end, you're probably going to be in tears by the end. This is a very emotional experience because it really makes you invested in the characters in ways that most video games don't. Walking Dead really is a special game, especially if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, whether it be the TV show, the comic books or whatever. This ties into some of that stuff as well. 2013, there can only be one. Grand Theft Auto 5. So Grand Theft Auto 5, what's really impressive is that this came out in 2013. Here we are in 2020. It's still one of the best, most popular, well-played games around. It's amazing and weird. How is this game still being sold? How is this game still successful? Surely everyone now has this game. But no, apparently it's still getting released. It's still being sold. People are still playing it. It's got a great story campaign with three lead characters. Trevor, if you want to be crazy. Michael, if you want to deal with the family stuff. And Franklin, if you want to deal with all the gang stuff. 
So their three stories merge together really well. You pull off some really impressive heists. The whole mechanic of having to change characters all the way through, allowing for different perspectives and opportunities and is really well executed. You've got the great gameplay, lots of plenty of stuff you can do. You can go and do some yoga, you can play tennis or golf, you can go watch a movie, you can rob cars, rob shops, you name it, you can do it. This is just an open playground for you to interact with, basically. Then, on top of that, you've got Grand Theft Auto Online, where you can do that with your friends. You can buy nightclubs, you can go and just sit down in an apartment and have a drink, you can go to the casino, there are a bunch of heists you can do, lots of missions, races, there's all sorts. Again, this is just an interactive playground for you. And it's a testament to how good and how well developed this world is. That since 2013, people are still occupying it, still playing around in it, still buying the game. 2014, an odd choice. One that critics gave mixed reviews to, but audience scores were a little higher. Alien Isolation. So Alien Isolation took inspiration from the original Alien movie in that it's slow paced, horror focused. The whole point of this game is to get through the space station, avoid the alien. The alien is constantly hunting you down. It's scary, it's terrifying at times because it's relentless. You can't fight back, you can only distract it. You can try and get its attention to go somewhere else. But chances are if you're in a corridor and all of a sudden the alien comes, you're dead. So, this game, one of the problems with this game is that it's too long. There's enough story in this game, I think, to make two or three games. And they crammed it into this, making it an epic alien science fiction story. Personally, I liked it, but there is too much of it. They also set things up for a potential sequel, which I don't think we're ever going to get. There was kind of a mobile sequel spin-off thing, but I think it's unofficially related to this. I think this is a game that's really underrated. It's scary, it's horrific, it's got an interesting story that ties into the movies. You play as Ellen Ripley's daughter in this one. I think this is a really underrated game and I think people should go back and give it another shot. 2015, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. The third Witcher video game and in my opinion, one of the greatest games ever made. This is an epic, fantastical, open world RPG. If you include all the DLC, you're talking about 200 hours worth of gameplay at least. You've got this huge 100 hour main story campaign with a bunch of side quests. Some of the side quests, by the way, are just as big and as grand as the main story with fully fleshed out characters and stories of their own. You could really get lost in this world. There's monsters to hunt, there's the main story you can follow, there's characters who are living, breathing individuals it seems. Then add on the DLC which adds more of it. Each of the two DLC packs are essentially two whole brand new games of their own. It's incredible how much love and attentions went into this. The one thing that doesn't quite hold up, retrospectively, is the combat. The combat, by all means, not bad. There's tactical elements to it. The fact that you've got to use oils to take down certain enemies. Certain swords can only be used on certain enemies. You've got powers which will give you an advantage across certain enemies. But in retrospect, there are only a few of these things that you actually need to do and you can essentially go into most combat situations and just button mash your way through it. So that's a little disappointing but again it's still fun. This is one of the greatest games ever made and because it's based on the Witcher book series which is now also a TV show the games had a resurgence in popularity as well. 2016 Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. So in Uncharted 4 they had the hard task of wrapping up Nathan Drake's story and they did it. It's one of the best looking games ever made, at least at the time. It probably still is if I went to look back at it now. But it had these great characters, these lovable characters, and Nathan Drake and Sully and Elena. How do you wrap up their storyline? Well, you bring in a new character, the brother. The brother who we've only just been introduced to, who apparently existed all along because you know that's how brothers exist. But they bring in these new characters, they add to the lore of the series in new fascinating ways. They are on the hunt, a big quest for this pirate treasure. The gameplay is pretty much standard and shorter stuff. They've added some open world areas with a jeep and a vehicle. Some of these stuff felt a little unnecessary and a little too open at times. They've added a new rope system where you can swing from ropes and stuff like that. That's fun. But it's essentially just Uncharted again, which is fine because the Uncharted gameplay was really fun and enjoyable. But the big thing here was the story. How's it going to wrap up the story? And it does so in a suitable emotional way. 
not going into spoilers, but there is closure for these characters. And there's also hope for the future of the franchise because this wasn't the last Uncharted game, it's just the last one with these characters. 2017, Horizon Zero Dawn. So Horizon Zero Dawn is another open world RPG light-ish game. So it's saying something when as a story driven game, as someone who likes story and character, the story and characters of this game are, in my opinion, the weakest part of the game. That's not to say they're bad, it's just that the least interesting part of it. Because here you are in this big gorgeous open world, an open world which you can literally pause at any point, take a picture, and there you have a big piece of art you can put on your wall if you want. But this open world, it's not empty. There are robot dinosaurs and creatures all over the place. Why? Well, that's part of the story. You've got to really go into the story to try and figure out why is the world this way? Why is all this abandoned technologies and these b abandoned ruined cities here? How are there people still around? Who is Aloy? What's her backstory? That's the fascinating stuff about this story. And you get some really interesting answers. Sometimes the way the story is told isn't great, I don't think, and I think that's probably the weakest part of it. But the gameplay is full of tactics. Each creature and dinosaur has its own weak spots which you've got to target. Sometimes you've got to plant mines to get them, sometimes you've got to target an item and pull it off them. There really is a different approach to every scenario and every animal and every combat situation. There are also humans to take down which are a little on the simpler side. But this game really is something special because it's got a good story, just always pulled very well, great gameplay and it's absolutely gorgeous. 2018. The only year in which I couldn't narrow it down to one, so instead I've got two. So, Celeste. Celeste is a platforming game, it's a tough platforming game, where you play as Madeline, although you can rename the character at the beginning of the game. But the whole point of this is, this is a platforming game that's tough with lots of little secrets and collectibles you can get along the way. It's a great platforming game at its core. Add on to that the emotional, investable story. This is where the game really elevates from being a great game to being an amazing game because the story will resonate with everyone. It's about mental health, about mental illness, it's about overcoming the challenges and obstacles in life and it's very emotional. There are key elements of this story which will resonate with absolutely everyone, almost tear-jerking moments at times. So I encourage everyone to play Celeste because it's something special. Add on to that the gameplay, of course, which is there's a lot of it. You could be playing this game for hundreds of hours, t depending on how tough you find it. And if you are finding it tough, you can even make it easier. There are a bunch of accessibility options in there. The other game this year, Red Dead Redemption 2. So Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game that divides many people. Some people loved it, some people hated it. A lot of people are in the middle. I personally loved it. Now, one of the things that people derided about this game is that Unlike the first Red Dead Redemption, unlike Grand Theft Auto, this is much more of a simulation game. That means it's trying to be as realistic as possible. So when you're walking around, you are walking slowly. If you're in bad weather, if you're in snow, you're walking even slower. You've got to deal with weather, you've got to deal with health and illness, you've got to deal with eating food and trying to survive and so on. So you've got to change your clothes and all that lot. If you're in a building and you're trying to search cupboards, you are slowly reaching in, getting the items. It can be a little tedious. Once you play this game for 50, 60 hours, though, you kind of get used to that stuff. And at that point, you probably like it if you're playing it for that long. But it's got great shooting and horse riding mechanics, albeit not the greatest stuff ever seen in a video game, but it's there. What really elevates this game is the open world, the characters, and the story. So this is probably the best open world ever depicted in a video game. It's living, it's breathing, it feels real. Around every corner there seems to be something going on. Whether it just be like a deer running by or maybe there's a gang waiting to ambush you or something like that. Bunch of side quests in there as well, fleshing things out. There's a lot of humour and satire in there, a lot of secrets in there because it's a rockstar game. The story though, the story is all about you playing as Arthur Morgan, part of the Dutch Vandalin gang in the heyday of the Wild West, the times in which the Wild West was coming to an end. So you're on the run, each and every one of the characters in this gang feels like real people. Depending on how long you want to spend time with them, you can go fishing with them, you can go rob a bank with them, you can stick to the main story if you want. You can just sit down and talk to them or listen to them play music and hang out, have a beer or whatever. 
these feel like real people. So by the end of the game, and somewhat spoilers, this is a prequel to Red Dead Redemption, so you know that not all these characters are going to make it out here. There are some really emotional elements in this game where one by one these characters start to go their own way, let's say. And my biggest piece of advice for anyone wanting to play this game, try and keep your horse alive because there's something in there that will resonate with everyone. This is an emotional, heartfelt story with great characters. I think it's really something special. 2019. Now, if you've seen my game of the year from 2019, you know what the answer is here. It's Resident Evil 2. So we're not going to talk too much about it. Resident Evil 2 was my favorite Resident Evil game. The remake is now still my favorite Resident Evil game. So what this does is it took the tank controls and the isometric views of the original Resident Evil 2 and changed it to be third person action horror focused. So you're plodding around this police station in darkness, holding up your torch, trying to avoid the zombies and all the creatures. It's scary, it's tense and intimidating. You can only carry so much supplies. There's a good story in there. This is probably the greatest horror video game ever made. So those are my games of the decade. I'm sure you disagree with some of them. Like I'm no doubt expecting some of you to say, well, what about The Last of Us? Yeah. I've played The Last of Us, it's not on this list. So let me know in the comments and feedback down below what your games of the decade were. And of course, subscribe to my channel to get more content like this. And of course, go to Twitter and Instagram and follow me at the underscore Graham Burton. Until next time though, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.